Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our look at one of my favorite apps for calendars, and that's Fantastical 2. I did a previous screencast that introduced Fantastical 2 and did an overview of the interface and some of the features of the application. So if you haven't seen that yet, you may want to go back and take a look at it. Uh, what I'm going to do now in this uh, second screencast is just go over some of the different preferences that you can set as well as the menu bar item that is built into Fantastical 2. So here we are in the preferences area. You can get there by coming to the gear icon down here and saying preferences, uh, but I've already got it pulled up. And let's just start with the general area here. Now what Fantastical allows you to do is to change uh, some of the look and feel of the application itself. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, make sure we open automatically at login, and I would highly recommend that because there is a menu bar item uh, that gets launched that I'm going to show you in a minute that will then make that always available. You won't have to launch the application every single time. Now you can set what your default calendar is right in here and just choose the one that you want. Uh, you can even make it say last calendar used so that that way it just defaults to the one that you're using. Uh, again, you can set a reminders list to whichever list you have in your uh, reminders application on your Mac. And then you can set the uh, default event duration, whether it's an hour or 45 minutes, 90 minutes, that sort of thing. Now, you can choose when you want to start the week on. So we're here we are in week view, and I've, it's chosen to start on Sunday. But let's just say I want to start on today. So I just want to start it on Monday or the day that's selected. If I just hit this, you'll notice that Sunday disappeared and now Monday is the start date. And if I come back, if I change it back to Sunday, then it'll put Sunday back here. So depending on how you want to look at your calendars, you can set it that way. And uh, if you have a work week that starts on a Monday, you may want to just see that and not worry about Sunday. Now, the other thing we can do is we can look at the month view. So let me just come over here. I'm going to change this to month and then we'll come back in here and on the month view we've got it started on the first week of the month okay so my calendar starts here April 1st started on a Saturday and so that's where it starts if I want I can change that to the current or selected week so that it will then go to whatever my current week is so every time the week is finished it'll roll back up and you'll just have the week that you're working on plus anything after it so again that comes in handy if you prefer instead of looking at a month view you like to look ahead I'm just going to go ahead and put that back, and you see it's put it back to where it was before. So let's go back to uh, the week. Uh, you can say start the week on, and let me just go back to week here for a minute, and we'll come back in here. You can choose to start the week on Sunday. You can choose to start it on Monday. You can choose to start it on Tuesday, and you can see how it's just changing everything right here. And so it will rotate through those days so that you can choose how you want to start the week. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on Sunday, but you do have flexibility on where you start that uh, in the process. You can choose the number of days a week from 7 to, you can go 14, and you notice I get more days then here on the calendar. And this can come in handy when you're using Fantastic Calendar, let's say in full screen view, and maybe you want to have a look ahead. Or I can just limit it to 5 and just have a bigger view of the week. Uh, again, I'll just put that back to 7 for our purposes here. I can choose when the day starts, so I can choose if it starts at 8 or 1. You can see it's how it shows 8 o'clock there. Maybe I'm an early riser. I want to cho change it to 6 a.m., and it's not showing it right now, but if I come all the way back here, it will actually start the day right there at 6. Uh, but it's up to you in terms of how you want to do that. I'll just put it back to the default, and then you can end the day at a certain time as well. And then you can choose to show how many hours at a time. So right now we've got 10 hours at a time. I can say I want to see 16 hours at a time. And notice how now all of a sudden everything kind of just bunches up and I see more hours there. Uh, or I can go back to the, uh, let's see, I can go back to 12 hours and do it that way. So again, however you want to lay that out, there is the flexibility. Now I can also choose the date and time formats if I want to do that. Just by clicking this, it's going to actually launch. Yeah, it'll take a minute here. So it launches us right into System Preferences, and then inside System Preferences, I can choose to change the date and time that I want for the entire system, and then that'll change with the calendar as well. So let's go ahead and come back here. Let's go back to Preferences and bring this back in here. Now I can also hit the mini window with a shortcut and I can change that shortcut. And I'm going to show you the mini window in a little bit, but I want to go through all of these different options. So in terms of appearance, uh, I can choose to hide Fantastical in the menu bar, which is up here, or hide it in the dock. So if I don't want it in my dock, I can hide it. And that's what I typically will do, so I don't have another icon in the dock itself. 
Uh, I can see the list can show, uh, again, all days. And the list is this area over here. So if you'll see, I can show all days or selected day only. Notice it only shows today or today and the next day. Or I can go back to all days. And you see how that all comes back. I can change the text size as well. I can go extra small if I like it real tiny to fit more on there. Or I can go large if I don't see so well and I really want to have that blown up. Uh, let's go back to normal. I can sort reminders by either priority or in due date, due date or title. Uh, and then on the menu bar icon, it can show either the date or I can have it show the day and weekday, which will change that in the menu bar. Or I can have it change today's remaining items if I'm looking at it as a task list. I mean, I've got all these different ways to, uh, you know, show it. And I prefer the date because it's easy just to look at it and see what today's date is. Now the app icon badge uh, shows the same thing. If I've got the icon in the actual... Uh, doc, I can choose what I want to have it show. Uh, if I want to show overdue reminders or what's due today or remaining items or nothing uh, or new event invitations. So I'm just going to leave it that way. Now I can show when events end uh, if I want to or I can uncheck that where it doesn't show where they end and you can see how it will uh, shift a few of those things. Uh, I can show calendar uh, week numbers if I want and you can see how it's just added this over here. Uh, for a particular view. And I can also show declined events if I want. Now I can show map for locations, show reminders, show completed reminders, and I can organize reminders by list. The other thing I can do is I can use a color menu bar icon. And if I hit that, it'll change to the color up here or not. And then I can also go to a light theme. And so if I don't like the black over here, I can change it to a light theme and have the entire thing show in white. Or I can just uncheck that and it goes back to the black. So again, there's some options to be able to customize the appearance. Uh, we've already done the accounts and calendars. So if you want to look at the alerts, you can set different alerts for different uh, types of things, whether you want to show the shared calendar in the notification center or the invitations in the notification center and default items. And you can also automatically add alerts to new timed events, all day events, or birthdays and anniversaries just to remind you. And you'll have little reminders that will pop out. And then we have advanced uh, in here. We can choose to use Google Maps or Apple Maps. And we can go to today for adding, adding items, or we can do a time zone override if we want to. And then choose uh, to show a secondary time zone in day and week. And if we can either go Pacific time or we can choose other, and it will give us a different option. So again, if you're working in two different time zones, you can have that set up. And then, of course, we have updates over here where you can check for updates. Well, let me just show you real quick that time zone. You can see right over here is where we have the time zone. I can say other, and I can choose a city in order to shift this to. So let's just say in my case I'm going to go, let's just say New York, and I'm going to say OK. So that's Eastern Time. And what's going to happen is it's going to adjust uh, my information based on the time zone. You notice the time over here is shifting. See, there's Pacific time, and now it shows Eastern time, and that's three hours ahead, so now it shows it's 4 o'clock Eastern time. So if you're working in different time zones, you can just come in here and change it, and it'll have you covered, and you're all set and ready to go. Now that you've gotten a good idea of how to customize uh, the Fantastical Mac application, let's go ahead and take a look at the menu bar item. One more thing I do want to show you before we look at the menu bar application is that you can print calendars in Fantastical and they look really great if you're someone who likes to print. If I just come down here to the preferences area and just select print, I get this drop down dialog. And so right within here, I could actually print my calendars if I want to do that. And you can see that I can uh, change the view here. I can do a month view and it has all my information on it. And what's great is it even gives me the keys to what each calendar is and puts all my information on there and it adds the uh, next month right next to it. Uh, I can say starts with this month, next month, the particular month that's on there. I can do this by year if I want a whole year calendar. I can also do it by list if I want to list the different things that I have going on in a particular day. Uh, on my list, or I can go back to day if I wanted to do that. So again, it's just a really nice way to be able to print your calendar and do it uh, in a way that uh, that looks great. And I could just choose what to include and what not to include. Uh, you can see I can choose not to include the many calendars and they'll disappear, uh, not to include the calendar keys or to include them. I can do the calendar week numbers if I want to, and that adds those little numbers on the side. Uh, I can choose to do black and white if I don't want to do color. 
and I can choose the text size. You know, I can choose a little larger text if I want it to show up a little bit more, or smaller text if I want to fit more on there. Uh, so again, uh, for those of you that like to print your calendars, this is a great way to do it, and you can choose when it starts and when it ends, and then print, and you'll have your calendars in a printed format. Now, Fantastical not only comes with a desktop application, it also comes with a menu bar item that runs in the background. And the nice thing about the menu bar item is it's laid out very similarly to how it's laid out on the iOS app for your iPhone. So let's come up here. You can see I've got my calendar information right here. If I just click on this, you notice that I get this pop-up that comes here. And I can choose to have it attached or detached. It really doesn't matter. Um, I can just uh, move it up and, and uh, center it here. And what will happen is, is this gives me a full look at my calendar now. And you'll notice that I've got all of the different options here. I can add an event right here from this area. I can actually come in here and do a search for certain items that are there. I can also hover over uh, my different events here and I get the pop out just like I would with the uh, desktop application. Here's the one with Mike. You can see it's even got the uh, map on here. And so this is a fully featured uh, application. If I just keep scrolling through, you notice how it scrolls through the days and takes me ahead in the months, depending on the events and things that I have going on. Um, with this, I can also use my calendar sets. You can see I've got my work calendar or my calendar set, and I got a different view, and then I go back to work. So I can manage all of that in here. I can also look at my task lists from right here as well on, uh, on there and uncheck this to get back. And then I can access everything from here. Preferences, go to a certain date, uh, open the full calendar window, or if I want, I can just attach the mini window. So I'm going to attach it and you'll see what happens. It detaches it right to the icon so that if I close this and open it, it'll stay attached. To remove it, all I have to do is just drag it and I can set it wherever I want. If I want to put it back, then I attach it and go just like that and it puts it right back up in the menu bar. So again, this is a really nice feature because you don't always want to have your calendar open all over the place. Uh, sometimes you just want to have quick access to it. And the menu bar item does that for you and has all of the features that are included in the main application itself. So that's all I have for this week on uh, Fantastic Cal 2. As you can see, it's a great application. Uh, it's one of my favorite calendaring applications. And hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use it yourself. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.